there have been a lot of forecasts uh, in how many years Russia might attack Baltic states. What is your take on that? Well, I don't uh, forecast anything. Uh, I understand that uh, Europe needs to be ready and uh, up and running with its military forces, then nobody will challenge it. And I don't think uh, it helps a lot to talk about how many years we do have or not have. First of all, uh, Russia is right now have, having difficulties to, uh, to take a little village of Avdiivka, so I don't think it is pos uh, capable of doing more uh, today. Uh, but of course, uh, we have to win the war in Ukraine. If we win the war of, U of Ukraine, then uh, the situation is different. Uh, and we, do, we need to concentrate on that. But at the same time, we need to build up our own capabilities. We need to really invest much more in the defense. Uh, Estonia's uh, GDP's percentage is right now 3.5. Uh, I think uh, we need five. I need, but the percentages are not supporting or defending us, but the capabilities. So we need to build up capabilities. We need to have missiles. We need to have shells, uh, artillery shells uh, to defend ourselves. Then nobody will test, test. But so you're saying that Estonia is not ready yet? No, no, we are always ready. Everybody is ready to fight for the country. We Ukrainians were ready as well, but we can be much more ready. And I'm not talking about Estonia. I'm not. I'm talking about Europe as a whole. And uh, 30 years of peace, peace dividends, or years of uh, tens of years of peace dividend, uh, have uh, made uh, people comfortable. They don't want to invest. The Germans, the French, the Brits. They, they don't uh, want to invest in defense, but now they recognize that it's really needed. Uh, and so in every country, the defense budget is increased. But not all the countries have yet reached the 2% of the GDP hurdle. So I, I call every European country to spend 2% or more uh, for defense. Then we are stronger all together and nobody can challenge us. What are the main challenges for Estonia in this process of building up capabilities? There, uh, the problem uh, is uh, our size of economy. Uh, I'm always saying that it's not about uh, two or three percent of the GDP. It's about the size of the GDP. Uh, Hundred percent is too small to buy planes, ships, uh, and uh, missiles. Therefore, uh, we need to work together with our NATO partners and NATO in, inside the NATO alliance. We need to make the whole alliance stronger, uh, and and that is what we are doing today. We always are talking about that Russia will not win this war, but we cannot exclude a sort of remote possibility that it might actually win this war in Ukraine, especially if Europe and United States are not that willing or not willing, uh, ready to come and help. What happens then? I'm not speculating with that option. Russia has already lost this war. The question is whether Ukraine can win the war. But, uh, but Russia has already lost because it has not achieved any of the political aims they, they wanted to achieve with this, uh, this war. And I don't see that happening. I mean, the only thing, uh, what is it all about right now, is the face saving. They can, they can win some territories, but they were not able to break the Ukrainian nation. So I don't see us losing. But, as I said, Ukraine must win the war, take back the territories, and the criminals of Kremlin need to be uh, uh, charged in the court, in the international court. Do you think Europe is still getting, not understanding something about Russia and Putin? Putin's uh, uh, propaganda war is uh, very efficient. Uh, it is manipulating the hearts and minds of Europeans, and we see that uh, uh, we have seen different news about it. We need to make ourselves stronger and less uh, comfortable. Europe is too comfortable to believe that the war is real, uh, and we need to make sure that European people understand that that's not about Ukraine, it is about Europe. And the last thing, we need to understand, uh, to make uh, people understand what is the alternative. And criminal Putin run, run 40 million nation on the border with uh, Europe, uh, if Ukraine loses, is much more expensive and much more dangerous if we will lose. 
In Latvia, we had some discussion when our head of armed forces said that Latvia now is as safe as, for instance, Spain. Would you say the same as about Estonia, uh, taking into account that also you were head of armed forces in Estonia? Well, I have already said that we are safer than ever. Uh, but the spot we are will never be similar to Spain <laughs> because we have uh, intermediate border uh, between European Union, NATO and Russia and our neighbour is showing that they are willing and capable of using conventional uh, military power to achieve their political goals. So the will is there, the capabilities are there, so we have to be ready every time. I, don't, can, I cannot say that about Spain. Do you think that Estonians can sort of feel safe right now? Yes, of course. We need to feel. We, we, we need to, the mentality should be like in Finland, that we are ready and we are not afraid. If we do that, everything goes perfectly. Thank you. So much. Thank you. Thank you.